Welcome to the High Voltage to Light Electric Vehicle channel. Before we get started with this week's video, a quick heads up. We still have a few of the limited edition high voltage kits paired with the Bafang M625 left. So if you're looking for a good deal on a motor and controller package, you can find details in the description. We're also going to be extending our discounts on the regular high voltage kit until the end of the year. This video, we're going to take a look at the CYC Gen 4 and see how it's done over the last year in terms of reliability. The video playing right now is from my CYC X1 Gen 1 build. Back when CYC first started out, I picked up a couple of their motors to build bikes with the intention of making similar modifications to my BBS HD, i.e. replace the controller, run a higher voltage. The Gen 1 CYC was a maximum 52 volt system back then. It also used CYC's own controller. The bike here is the second ever built to use the ASI Back 800. CYC were not even aware of ASI's existence at this point. The whole CYC using ASI's controller did not come until Gen 2 of the X1. Anyway, the point of this bike was to run me up the hill to work and keep me up with traffic for the most part. I have a pretty physical job, so I really don't want to have to do a 5km bike ride of 10% grades to get to work to start with. All of my Gen 1 CYCs died on this hill. In the end, I ran out of spares, so that was the end of my fun with the X1. When it ran, the bike was like a rocket. It was faster than my BBS HD bike. I had this up over 85 kilometers an hour on the flat pretty easily. But it also spent a good deal of time being taken on and off the bike to get it fixed. And in all, I probably had less than 2,000 kilometers out of both motors. So over $1 per kilometer is not an awesome return on an investment without even looking at the time I put into it. CYC adopted the ASI controllers after running into unfixable issues with their own homegrown controller. They had the same kind of issues that I did with the ASI in cutouts. They tended also to cook the rotors if you ran them like I did in this video footage. In addition to this, they left the connectors to the controller in a pretty exposed location for the back 8x5, and they had a lot of returns due to water ingress issues. Essentially, the Gen 2 and 3 continued on from Gen 1, gradually trying to fix issues like weak sprag clutches and chain tensioner design. The new motors look quite different, although intrinsically there is zero difference in the basic design between the Gen 1 and the Gen 4. The Gen 4 is the focus of this video though, and we're going to look at some videos that I've poached from other channels to evidence my points. You might think that after my experiences, and then seeing other people's tales of woe with the second and third generations of CYC's motors, that I'd be a bit sceptical at seeing yet another generation promising to be the reliable motor that solves all the problems that have rather plagued the X1. And I was very sceptical, which I think is fair. So the question is, have they got it right with the Gen 4? Let's have a look at this first video made by DIY 500 Amp, which I'll be using for the purposes of this analysis. As well as the CYC X1, it also shows some information on the new JP40 cells, which look to be very, very good. And I'll link to the full video in the description, which is well worth a watch. So what does this video do? It demonstrates the limits of the CYC X1 motor and gives us the true rating of the motor for continuous power, or at least the ballpark area, which is awesome. I, I think it's the only video evidence out there that does this so far. If you want the short answer now, the X1 is capable of around 2.5 kilowatts continuous, depending on external temperatures, which when you consider the physical size of the motor, it's not actually that bad at all. It was able to do this for about four minutes of full power riding at six kilowatts before it did start to throttle. In the video, we can see right at the start, six kilowatts being dumped into it, which is again, it's pretty impressive for quite a small motor. This is the kind of power that the lightning rod small block handles and the rotor and the stator on that are quite a bit larger than this. The question is how long can you dump six kilowatts into the motor before it gets too hot for it? If we zoom through to 420, we get our answer. It looks like at 70C, the thermal rollback kicks in and restricts the max power to 2,500 watts by the time it hits 74C, which is pretty aggressive because 74C is not that hot for motors. Based on past experience, I think this is because if the thermistor is showing 74C on the coils, the rotor is going to be much hotter, which is what led to a lot of failures with the ASI controllers. This is pretty aggressive rollback from 6 kilowatts to 2.5 kilowatts in 4 degrees. The rollback on the ASI controller has to be calibrated very accurately, so it's not surprising that CYC ran into problems. 
So I think the rotor here is being pretty aggressively protected. The photon, for example, only gets throttled towards 100C. The magnets CYC use are supposed to be rated at 140C, so they have to be protecting something internal that gets way hotter than the 70 degrees on the sensor. And the only thing I can think of is the rotor. Anyway, it's really great to see this kind of footage. What we need to see now is how long it lasts for under this kind of load. It's not a big motor, and some parts are actually very small and prone to potential wear. So I hope that there is a follow-up on this video once the bike's seen several thousand miles. This next clip is from a stock Suron and a CYC X1 at 72 volts. A Suron is a 60 volt stock versus the 72 volts and about twice the weight of a CYC bike. So it really shouldn't be all that close, and it's not, as you can see in the video. The lighter CYC bike is the first at the top of hill, and it's also the first in the drag race. This next clip is CYC's demo bike running up against a stock Suron, or the closest they could get to a stock Suron. They're using a down two version of the EBMX controller. So unlike the first video, the Suron here is actually running the same voltage as the CYC bike, and you can see that the results are much closer. So in terms of performance, you can expect to have something that's slightly quicker than a stock Suron, which makes sense. When you push the same power through two machines, the lighter machine should go faster. A stock Suron is not particularly quick. High voltage modified BBSHDs will also beat a stock Suron. As soon as you modify the Suron though, it's going to be beating the pants off the CYC bike. In terms of price, you'll likely be able to build a powerful CYC build for the same as a stock Suron. The real advantage of the CYC is that it still looks like a bicycle, so you can restrict it and go more places than you can with a Suron. It's also going to be much more easy to transport a 70 pound CYC bike versus a 160 pound Suron. There has also been encouraging signs from the Facebook group. And I've seen posts by lots of people that have built bikes with the Gen 4X1, but not really any posts from people that have had huge issues. Most issues have come from people upgrading actually from a Gen 3 or a Gen 2 to a Gen 4 by swapping out parts, which is a more complicated process. Now, it also must be said that most people that are posting are not running anywhere near the 6 kilowatts seen in the first video. They're around the 2 to 3 kilowatt range, and I think that the motor should last a long time at this level. I'm very interested to see how the bike in the first video lasts, as well as that of a few of the other high power riders. These bikes only have a few hundred kilometers on them at the moment. So I would like to see how things look at 2000 kilometers and 4000 kilometers. Are they starting to need new parts? The components of the X1 are still quite small, so they're gonna wear out faster at six kilowatts and above. They have to. The question is how long still? So to summarize, I think the Gen 4 is the biggest single improvement to the X1, and if you run it at 2,000 to 3,000 watts, you ought to have a pretty reliable bike for a decent number of kilometers. I still think that pushing it past that is going to see the parts wear out fast, so we'll have to see. If the bike in the first video goes past 5,000 kilometers with ease and no parts needing repair, then we'll know for sure that the Gen 4 has hit the spot. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.